Hey, my friends, it's your old pal Jordan the Lion and your old pal Katie. Hey. How are you all doing today? We hope you said great. We are having a great day and we are going to have a great day in Fort Myers today. We are going to take Ja out, let him have some fun at the park, and then we're going to go check out something very historical and I'm excited to see it. So, you all are coming along with us. Have a great day. Days with Jordan the Lion, it begins right now. So far, Fort Myers is pretty beautiful. So as you're entering town from that bridge you can see over our shoulder, we noticed that there was like some sunken boats from the hurricanes a couple of months ago and we were just gonna take a look at some of the damage. Right over here you can see one that's still kind of stuck and sinking in the water but there's like a whole graveyard over here beside it. That was really sad to see. We're gonna go and see something that should bring us a little bit of joy. We're gonna go see some history now of Thomas Edison and Henry Ford. I was telling you this morning that Firestone, Henry Ford, and Thomas Edison, they were all great friends and they all used to travel like family vacations and all that stuff together. So that's what we're gonna see is some of the houses that they had winter gatherings at. Yeah, they were like buddies to think that could ever even be a thing. It sounds like a good story or a lie. Well, I told you though, the crazy thing is if you go to the Henry Ford Museum, they actually have Thomas Edison's last breath that his son captured in a bottle and gave to Henry Ford as a gift because they were such great friends. Yeah, that's insane. I am super excited for this. You guys know me, I love this kind of stuff. Edison and Ford Winter Estates. Homes, gardens, museum, and laboratories. And right when you enter, right by the state of Florida flag, have a little placard here that tells you some story. 1885, world famous inventor Thomas Alva Edison first visited Fort Myers. In 1886, he built his winter home, Seminole Lodge, a second home for a friend, partner, and a laboratory. He brought his bride, Mina Miller Edison, to honeymoon and vacation here in 1886. The homes were designed by Edison and pre-cut by two firms in Maine and shipped to Fort Myers. In 1916, industrialist Henry Ford purchased the estate next door, the Mangoes, in order to spend more time with his good friend and mentor, Thomas Edison. These two prominent figures vacation here until Edison's death. In 1931, and Mina continued to vacation here until 1947, the city of Fort Myers purchased the Ford estate in 1988 as an addition to the Edison historical site Mina generously deeded the estate to the city of Fort Myers for a dollar. In her dedication ceremony, March 6, 1947, she stated, my faith and belief in the sincerity of the people of Fort Myers prompts me to make this sacred spot a gift to you and posterity as a sanctuary and botanical park in the memory of my honored and reverend husband, Thomas A. Edison, who so thoroughly believed in the future of Fort Myers. That is awesome. Let's go see these. Look at all the forestry. They have a good statue of Edison right over here as soon as you walk in. Take a photo with. You can see Thomas Edison was named Man of the Millennium by Life Magazine. Best known for perfecting a commercially viable incandescent light bulb. I always love statues. It looks like they have a couple of them around the property. I think this might be what I'm most excited to see is not the statue, but I was telling Katie that they apparently have like his exact laboratories that he used to work on things here, like set up exactly the same way. So that should be a lot of fun to see. The thing I don't understand is I noticed that he has like a, like a ball in his hand. It's, I thought it was a light bulb at first, but no, it is just, just a, a ball for some reason. We're gonna start by going across the street and seeing the homes. Here's a little statue to Mina Edison, who we read about, who donated the land for like a dollar. This is her heritage garden. And here we go. Looks like over to the left is the Edison estate. If you go straight, there's a beautiful fountain 
where the dock was. Here it's stating that he bought the property for $2,750. He made plans by creating a notebook that included a sketch illustrating his ideal winter retreat. It included not only the homes, but the laboratory, maintenance shop, and gardens for exotic and edible plants. So out here was where the dock once was. They're stating that this tree that's right here beside says it's an Edison original, that this would have been here. It's called a uh, Blue Maho. It's here during the, his time living here. And there's a river walk that goes right in front of the homes, which are right there. So we'll work our way up to touring through. You ready to see what high class living was back in the 1800s? Yep, let's do it. Let's check out this Florida paradise, as he called it. I think it's just absolutely cool that this is even something you can do because there are so many historical estates down in this part of Florida, like the Powell Crosley estate and the Proctor Gamble, I think it was the Gamble. What was it, Proctor? I forget which one. Several estates, but they're just not open all the time. Maybe one day or one week a year. Let's see which one this is. Edison Family Home. This is the Seminole Lodge. Great porch swing. So it looks like it's open air. So you can kind of look in over the glass. portrait of him above the fireplace. That's really cool. Think of the conversations that he would have had in here. His family and with Henry Ford. That is really cool. Stained glass up there. The library, it says. Oh, that painting is amazing. Which one? Oh, of him? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You get a little bit better view from here. Very controversial figure in American history, that's for sure. The book on the sofa right there is Small French Buildings, is what it says. And there's some family photos, him and his wife on those bookshelves. Very cool. Another view of the rooms that we just saw. Okay, we have some stairs. We'll go over here behind the staircase into this. This was Thomas and Mina Edison's bedroom. I was kind of curious about that. I was wondering if they would share a room or if they would have separate rooms. Never know. At that time, a lot of times, you know, somebody like him would have probably kept weird hours working and inventing things, so probably wouldn't keep the same sleeping hours as her, but it looks like they shared a room here. And on the other side of the staircase, they make it available so you can see a little bit further in. Oh, twin beds, yeah. That I did not notice. Separate beds. He's got some binoculars. He's been bird watching. It's just crazy to think that it was such a small room. Yeah, I know. You're right. When he could have had probably any size place he wanted, mm -hmm. this is kind of, I mean, it's, the house itself is kind of big, but the bedroom itself isn't all that huge. Mm -hmm. Now we're going around to what was 
technically I guess the front of the house. This shows the family den, it says. Oh, so under machine, he would have listened to music off of that. He invented that, if that's what I think it is. It looks like a, it's a cylinder machine. Maybe not. He invented a lot of stuff. I'm not sure what those are, but they have his picture on there. And that's what the old cylinders look like. They, they used to play music. I'm not sure if that's what those are or not, but that's certainly what they look like. You notice out here, kind of leading from the street towards us, there's uh, what they call a friendship walk and it's 50 stones each one dedicated to friends or influences from the neighborhood or someone that they wanted to remember relatives here's the friendship walk and I ask you not to step on it but they're all almost like little graveyard headstones Northeastern University Miss Effie nice Very cool to see the early electricity out here too, the lights out here. There's that stained glass window we saw when we first started looking. And over here must be the Henry Ford house. Again, we've seen a lot of this just from a different, different angle from the other windows. Just making our way around the house. All right, Katie, guide us over to the Ford Estate. Looking lovely in your dress once again. Thank you. Two chairs waiting for us right there. The Edison Tropical Menagerie says during the early 1900s, Florida snowbirds were often interested in the exotic local animals regulations governing keeping them these animals as pets did not exist at the time and the edisons were not immune to the tropical pet craze so this actually isn't the ford house this looks like this is still a continuation of the edison house because there's the dining room that's all big one one big house Oh yeah, because there's another estate over there, so that's the Ford Estate. Well, we're really slumming it nowadays compared to what these guys had. Like two full houses worth. Yeah, I know, we were just, yeah. Yeah, we take all that back about their bedroom. We're sitting there thinking they're kind of humble and everything, but <laughs> no, they had, they were living good over here. Here's the dining room. Very large. Here's another view of the dining room. You can see the fireplace over there. Over here we have the kitchen food pantry for the Seminole Lodge. I guess it does make sense that this place is so big now that we think about it. I mean, he did call it a lodge, so. I love the front, the big fish up there. There's a story to that. Charles Edison, who was the son of Thomas, went out fishing with one of his friends while Thomas also went out fishing and they were dropped off by a boat to fish at one of the spots separately. And Charles caught a tarpon and struggled with it and everything and when he got it and the, the boat came to pick them up thomas was on the boat also and yelled i caught a tarpon so they both ended up catching them and had them mounted and had them outside the house so this is one of them this says this is original edison wicker furniture from when they lived here used by the edison family and their guests during their stays at seminole lodge please don't touch it 
So this whole place over here is part of Seminole Lodge. All of this, not Katie, but all of this is also Seminole Lodge. And then it looks like the Ford house was the one down here. So we've seen both of these. They don't let you go upstairs in either house. So we showed you as much as we could on the ground floor. So let's go see the Ford house over here. I'm excited to see this. So right in front of the statue, it says 1914 Edison invited Henry Ford and his wife and son Edsel to the Edison, Florida estate. And in 1916, the Fords purchased their floor, Fort Myers estate. This is the one that they called the Mangoes. They explored the Southwest Florida together in a 1916 Model T touring car Ford gave to Edison. Here he is, in all his glory. Pretty good likeness. They have a statue of him also in front of his museum in Michigan. Here's the front of the house. You can see there is Clara Ford's Michigan Rose Garden. So she had a passion for roses and grew over 350 varieties and 10,000 rose plants at the family estate, which was called Fair Lane in Dearborn. Mrs. Ford's favorites were tea roses and shades of yellow and white. So she had a garden here as well and they're working on restoring it right now, which is what this all is right here. Good eyes, sweetheart. Katie just saw this. She noticed on the front door when we were looking at the door, we didn't even bother to see this. That's the original nameplate for the door with his name on it. Okay, for some reason, the entire front, all the glass and everything is closed up. But I noticed on the other side, the back side, they're open. So we'll go check that out. Here okay, they're showing an old picture. What his estate looked like with all the guava, grapefruit, orange, tangerine trees and everything in front of it. So we're standing at that front door right now. That photo would have been taken down here facing us. Here's the dining room table. We're not seeing the bedroom, so we're thinking that must have been on the second floor for them here. Well, let's go around the back and see what we can see through the windows, like peeping toms. Very cool stone chimney here. In this room was their guest room. Two guest beds with a decent distance apart. Looks like a drafting table. Drafting plans for the house over there. So I guess theoretically we have to assume this would have been where the anybody visiting them would like maybe the Firestones or whoever would have stayed here. Somebody with a top hat. And this is their living room. The chimney over here. Little piano over there. Lots of photos. Family photos all over the place. There's a record player. We have a little guest bathroom out here in its own separate room and that's what we just looked in over here here's the kitchen ice box Sit 
ceiling fan kind of surprised me. I didn't know when that came about. There's the dining room table in there. The maid's bedroom's not too bad, huh? Oh, it's very clean. Looks like she's got a bathroom in her room. I don't know if the guest room had one. Nice. Over here we're going into, this is the secretary's bedroom. You can see her typewriter. Oh, you know what? I think, okay, I get it. I think this is a shared bathroom right here with the maid. I think the secretary's bedroom was on one side, then the bathroom, and then the maid's room. So she didn't have her own bathroom, but then shared. And over there you see, that is definitely an Edison cylinder machine right there. That over there is a famous photo of the three friends vacationing together. It's Henry Ford, Mr. Firestone, and Edison. Now don't miss this, on the back side of the property of the Henry Ford house, they actually have a, um, a display of cars. See, there's the back of what we looked through, what we were able to show you of the mangoes. And over here. Looks like there are four automobiles in here. Have a truck. Ford Model TT truck, 1917. The cardboard cut out of Ford back there. And then over here, 1929 Model A. That's pretty cool. And then over on this side, we have a 1923 Model T Ford. It says a 1921 Ford Model T chassis converted into a truck. Wow, that's really cool. So they have a guided and unguided tour that you can take. And we did the unguided, but they actually have real tour guides that can explain a lot of detail if you want something like that. We're really lucky these are even here, you know? Like when we were showing you just the damage on the boats, this is right on the water. And a lot of the hotels we drove past that were right on the water were all fenced up and closed down now. So 